Hey guys, we are in the basement and today, yesterday guys, on this episode of John's Arcade. Well guys, <laughs> this is it guys. This, this right here I feel like is my first like restore video of the summer. Can you believe it? My God, we've been working so much on that stupid G07 on the journey and yeah, it's still working back there. Actually, I need to revisit that monitor. Um, I, need, I didn't quite adjust the colors right because the background should be a little more navy bluish. Right now it looks a little more grayish uh, on the levels, but uh, I'll do that on my own time. I was kind of in a hurry at the end of the last video because I was just wanting to be over and done with it. <laughs> so, so anyway, this video right here, I'm super excited about because we're going to the garage and we're gonna work on the cloak and dagger. My God, I cannot wait to get that game down here. I, I really cannot. And uh, so we're gonna go to the garage and, and, and this video I think might be one or two parts. It depends how far we get today. But we have a lot of stuff to do to that thing actually. It's actually in good shape, but there's a lot of stuff that I don't like, okay? Namely, the, the speaker grill is all wrong. The control panel, I wanna rebuild that. And then also we need to install the kick plate, which is actually kind of involved because we need to also put some laminate on there or repair the front. Anyway, enough of that. Why don't we just go to the garage, check out the Atari Cloak and Dagger, and let's get to work, guys, and enjoy us some summer restoration fun. All right, guys, let's go to the garage. All right, guys, we're back in the garage, and yes, we're gonna work on the cloak and dagger. Let's get this thing ready for the basement. By the way, it's a beautiful day. <laughs> I feel like this is my first like summer video because we've been screwing around the G07, and we're gonna actually do some work in this video that is not soldering and looking at monitors, so I'm actually very excited about that. But anyway, the cloak and dagger, here it is. We picked this up a couple months ago. I did a video of the pickup. Um, it's a game for me that has been a grail, a unicorn. Um, I've been looking for one for a very long time. Now Atari, let's just kind of review real quick. Um, Atari basically sold this game two ways. Um, and really, one way was kind of rare and prototypish, and that was a dedicated version that was like in a Crystal Castles style cabinet. And then the rest of the games, the majority of them were sold as a kit, a kit to convert Williams cabinets to this Atari Cloak and Dagger game. And of course, the game is based on that movie with Dabney Coleman. Actually, they developed the game first, they called it Agent X, and then they had a deal with the movie, movie company to do a licensing deal with Cloak and Dagger the movie, and they renamed Agent X Cloak and Dagger, and, and here it is. Um, so this kit here was installed in a Williams Defender back in the day, this is all original. Um, it's not reproduction artwork. This is literally from the kit, okay? And it's in pretty good overall shape. Um, I actually don't really want to mess with a lot of it because it is the original conversion kit artwork on a Defender cabinet, and I think it looks pretty good. However, we're missing the kick plate artwork right here because there was a piece of artwork that went on here that for whatever reason the operator did not install. Now, Rich at this old game has reproduced that. And I have one of those right here. So here's a reproduction kick plate art uh, piece of art, and we're gonna put it on in this video. Now, it's, it's not gonna be that simple though, because, well, this, this has a big gouge right here. We've got lock bar holes right here and here. So we're gonna have to address that. And I, I thought long and hard how we're gonna do that. And, you know, I thought about like, 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 like removing this the coin door, which we're gonna do, okay? Removing these bolts and the washers, which we're gonna do. Fill these in with dowels, um, bondo this, make sure everything's nice and flat, sand it, sand it, sand it, paint the whole thing black, and then put the artwork on. Well, that's a lot of work. So I think what we're gonna do instead, and we're gonna try this, I hope I can do this, because normally, when I put a piece of laminate on here, and that's what I'm talking about, I wanna put a piece of black laminate over this that's gonna basically cover all these imperfections, and then we don't have to mess around with Bondo and paint and anything like that. So I went to Home Depot, and I picked up a four by eight sheet total overkill of black Wilson Art laminate. Now they sell this at Home Depot, it's like $42 a sheet. This is the, the horizontal grade though, the countertop grade. So it's a little bit thicker than the vertical grade that we use like on Jump Bug and the Quantum. But it's not gonna matter because it's going on this kick plate right here and not the sides. So we don't have any T-molding to worry about because if you use the horizontal grade, 
countertop laminate <clears throat> on the sides, it'll actually stick out a little bit beyond the T molding, okay? But in the front here, it's it's not gonna matter at all. And, and really, it's not super thick anyway. It's it's like a 32nd of an inch. It's actually pretty thin. So what I'm normally when I would put laminate on a piece right here, I would want to pop this off. Okay, I would take the whole piece of wood off the cabinet and then we would laminate larger than the piece of wood and then router around it and then you have absolute perfect flush lines. But the way this cabinet is glued and stuff, it, it would be a nightmare to do that. And let me show you guys, um, like if we come inside here, that kick plate is like really on there. It's glued and it's got all kinds of wiring and stuff on it, stapled. I, I just don't wanna mess with that popping that off. So what I'm gonna try to do is cut the, the width of the laminate to be exactly the width of this opening right here. And I think if we take our time and have a steady hand, we can do that. And then maybe we'll lay the cabinet on its back flat, put the piece of laminate on here, um, uh, I think uh, longer and taller than the front kick plate, but the width the right way, and then maybe we can router it here and here, and then we'll have to router uh, the hole for the coin door, because we'll have the coin door removed when we put that on there. So I plan on doing that in this video. Um, I want to remove this plexi, I just don't like it. It's not original. Um, we have an original overlay on, on here that's in pretty good shape. Um, it just has some cigarette burns in it, which doesn't bother me that much. We could try getting rid of that with some magic eraser. But I, I wanna pull this plexi off. Um, I also wanna clean the, the bolts and stuff. They're, they're kinda rusted and the shafts of the joystick. And then the first thing I wanna do is address this up here, cause this is not right. This speaker grill that's on here, I believe is from a Frogger. Um, but again, this was originally a Williams Defender cabinet. So it would have had a speaker grill that covered the entire thing up here. And it was plastic. And what happened was uh, they got broken on location. And, and you'll find that those are always cracked or missing or what have you. And obviously that's what happened with this one right here. Now I did pick up this, okay. This is a reproduction speaker grill for a Williams Defender. Now this is metal, the original was plastic, but the whole pattern's identical, it's powder coated. Um, I bought this up from a guy on eBay, I think he sells these on Clov and everywhere else. Um, it was around 40 or 50 bucks, I don't remember. Not super cheap, but really very good quality and screen printed, I mean, uh, not screen printed, powder coated. <laughs> so so I, think, I think he did a really good job with it. So we're gonna put this on right away. Um, why don't we just kind of get to work here. Um, and I hope we can do all of this in this video. I'm actually getting a late start. <sighs> no surprise, right? Um, it's Sunday here already, like three o'clock. So hopefully we can finish this all today. It really does feel good to be out here doing this kind of work and not messing with the stupid monitor. By the way, there's all kinds of different screws on here, so we might try to fix that. I've got some of those security bits, kind of like the, the uh, Midway style screws. Maybe we'll use those. Okay. So let's see if all this comes off here. So this is the original um, channel. Originally when I got this game, I thought it was wrong because it was all bent and mangled, but they bent and mangled it because of this stupid speaker girl they put in here. All right, so let's get this channel out of the way. I think we're gonna have to remove the, um, the coin door. Let me get a key. All right, I think we need to pop the control panel off here to get the piece of glass off. Now, Richard Dissel game makes a, um, uh, not repro, it's a, I guess, <laughs> what am I trying to say? It's, it's a new bezel for this that was never made. It was kind of a, a fan created piece, I guess. 
it does look pretty cool. When I was down in, in Atlanta at the Southern Fry Gamer Expo, um, someone had a Defender Cloak and Dagger like this one, and it looked really great. And they had that bezel that Rich created on it, and it looked pretty sharp. I, I'm deciding, I can't decide if I want it, because it's technically not right. <laughs> um, but I don't know, we'll see. Okay, so what's going on here? This is nailed in. Oh God. All right, we're gonna have to take, um, so it looks like this is nailed. I don't know if that's right. I have to go look at my Robotron down there. I think the Robotron uses the same stuff. All right, let's take off the marquee. I'm not really sure how that metal speaker grill attaches on here. Oh God, I can't see what I'm doing up there. Okay, so let's pop this off here and see what's going on. And by the way, this game has white tea molding, which is technically wrong. And I, I kind of wanted to change it. I think I'm just going to leave it. Um, what do you guys think? I kind of want it. I kind of wish it was black, to be honest. Okay, so let's take a look here. Huh, this is actually riveted in. Is that right? Interesting. All right, well, let's get this old speaker, um, this Frogger speaker grill off of here. Um, so I'm going to need some sockets. All right, so I got to get the uh, this old speaker grill off, the wrong speaker grill. And I need some super deep sockets to do this. Maybe I can do it by hand. And then we're gonna have to re- Ah, oh, f All right, I, I just turned the game off. I actually dropped a screw back there and landed in the monitor. So there's no reason to keep the game on. So let's go ahead and get the rest of these off. Um, all right, I have all the nuts off here. So let's see if we can pop this off. Jeez. There's two. Oh. Boy, those are really in there, huh? guessing that originally this speaker was screwed to the top. Let me get a chair here and take a look. That's kind of my hunch. Uh, hard to say. Okay, so that's off. So I think what I want to do right now is remove this piece right here, and then we'll kind of figure out how that speaker grill and how the speaker is going to be held on there. But it seems like we have all kinds of extra holes in here. I think this right here is how this grill is held on. All right, 
Okay, so let's see how that speaker grill fits. Okay, so let's take a look here. So, I'm not really sure how it attaches to the back. Oh, it's really on there. I wonder if I need to pop this whole piece of wood off. It's a little more involved than I thought it was gonna be. So I think we, if we take this whole piece of wood off right here, and I believe it's just held on with these, then we could attach this thing to the back. I think that's what we're gonna do. So if I take this off, let's, let's do it. what comes with it? Nothing, it's just a piece of wood. So let's pop this off. Yep. Good. So let's take our speaker here and just kind of solder it on. So this is magnetic. Can I stick it to anything? Can you stick it to the light fixture? Okay. <clears throat> Okay, so that's totally free. <clears throat> so let's get this out of here. Great. Okay, so here's the whole panel right here. Um, you can see it's got a date code on it, August 31st, 1981. See that right there? It's kind of cool. All right, so let's come up with a plan. Um, so it's got these staples in here. So was that originally just stapled? I kind of think it was. I could see the plastic grill underneath it. I think it was, I think they stapled it. So let's pull those staples out because those are just going to kind of get in the way. And I think what we'll do is on the back side, maybe I get some tiny screws. Yeah, see like underneath the staple you can actually see the black plastic grill. So they, yeah, see here's remnants of it right here. Look at that. See that? So yeah, it was totally stapled on. All right, so I'm gonna go through here real quick and I'm just gonna remove all these staples and we'll come back. Okay, I got all the staples off here. So let's kind of figure out how we're gonna do this because um, there's all kinds of extra holes in here that are kind of confusing me. Um, and the wood is kind of broken here and here. I think I should rattle can this just really fast and just paint it black again. But on the back side here, I'm just trying to figure out like how the speaker is supposed to attach to this. And I'm looking at this and it kind of feels like originally there was a round speaker here with four screws. I don't know. Maybe not. It's hard to say. But I'm, I'm wondering if those carriage bolts are going to interfere with the speaker, right? So if, if we have these in here, like so, right? 
And then if we put the speaker grill over it, is it gonna matter? No, it really doesn't. Yeah, I think it's gonna be just fine. I don't even think I need a rattle can. You can't see anything, but. It doesn't quite sit flush though because of those carriage bolts. I wonder if I can attach this speaker from the end. I kind of want to desolder the speaker and then we can kind of just uh, build the whole thing outside the game. Let's take a look here. I'm kind of guessing this is not the original speaker. What do I have on my shelf? Do I have a round speaker? I don't think I do. Let me poke around, hang on. Okay, I looked, I, don't, I, I have a round speaker, but it's too small. So I'm just gonna just cut this real quick and then we'll re-solder it after. I'm just gonna leave it so I can see the color a little bit. All right, so that's black and that's red. So, I mean, listen, this speaker sounds fine. It's just not original, I don't think. Um, but I'm wondering, and by the way, this is the, the round speaker I found, and it's just way too small. It doesn't actually stay on here. So yeah, I kind of really think that they had a round speaker on here, but I'm wondering, it's funny though, if you look, you could see the, the the mark where this speaker was and well for one it's really off center um but it looks like it's been on there forever like freaking ever <laughs> but i'm kind of thinking that maybe we try screwing it to the back and that way we don't have to deal and, and we, we can actually center this better than they did and then just screw it to the back with these What's wrong with that? I should go to the hardware store and get some shorter screws. I don't think I have any. And I'm kind of thinking we get some like kind of finished nails, real small nails, and we just kind of nail the, uh... I think these actually might work. These are sheet metal screws, but they're short. I think those will work actually pretty well. Yeah, I think we're gonna just roll with this speaker. And we'll just do a better job centering it. And we'll screw it to the back. I mean, the speaker actually sounds really good. Just kinda of stick it right there and screw it in. Okay. MG6906. I wonder what the ohm rating is on this. Is it the right one? <laughs> 6 by 9 I'm guessing. MG6906. Let me look it up. Okay, I, I did a little research. It's supposed to be a 6.5 inch 4 ohm speaker and if I measure this speaker it's like 8 ohms. So like this one right here, this is like a 4 inch 4 ohm speaker. Like if I measure this with my multimeter on ohms, I get four, I get 3.9 ohms. And if I measure this one over here, you guys can see. So if I measure this guy, it's 8.2 ohms. You know what I'm gonna do? <clears throat> I'm gonna, here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna spray paint that black real quick, okay? And then I'm actually gonna go to Walmart and see if I can find a new speaker. <clears throat> if I can, great. If not, we'll, we'll reuse that one for now. Um, and I can replace it later. But I kinda would like to have at least the right value of a speaker here. I'm gonna remove these things right here.
I mean, I don't mind that the, that the shape, the form factor is wrong. It kind of does bother me though that um, it's just completely the wrong value. So I'm gonna go to Walmart and see if in the automotive area if they have some cheap four ohm, six and a half inch round speakers. And I kind of went on the internet real quick and it seems like they do. But let's, um, actually I'm gonna clean this real quick. Just wipe this down. So we're not spray painting dirt. <clears throat> of course, I gotta really make sure I dry this off here. I'm not gonna bother uh, patching these holes. <clears throat> you just can't see them with that grill over it. What you can see is, is the, the wood color, <clears throat> but the holes will just be a big black void. I'm not really gonna worry about it. So right away, this has become more involved than I thought it was. <laughs> I'm like, oh yeah, we'll just remove the old speaker grill and pop the new one in. All right, so let's, let's rattle can that. And so I'm using my trusty Rust-Oleum Universal Satin Paint and Primer in one. And... This can's from last year, hopefully it's okay. This is really not a critical piece here. It's summertime, black marks on the garage floor. All right, we're gonna let that dry. I'll put a second coat on and I'm gonna go to the store, I'll be back. All right, guys, I'm back. Um, I actually went to Walmart trying to find a speaker and uh, no luck. I mean, they had a six and a half inch speaker, but it was $65 for two of them. I'm like, I'm not paying that. So I think what we're gonna do is, I, I looked around in the garage here. I have this speaker right here, and this is a six by nine, like the one that was on there, but it's four ohms instead of eight ohms. And you know, the ohm value, you know, typically I think at 12 volt applications, like in cars and stuff, it's almost always four ohms. Um, I think because there's less resistance and they could just push more volume through them and the speaker we had in there before was an 8 ohm it probably doesn't matter and one thing to note too is that i don't have the original audio amplifier because uh the previous owner actually removed the williams uh power supply and audio amp out of the equation so we have a switching power supply and then he added a little like do-it-yourself audio amp kit right here so this is the only part here that is being stressed or not stressed by the speaker ohm value and you know i'm sure that thing's looking for a four ohm I, you know what it probably doesn't even matter to be honest but um I, i'm gonna go with the four ohm six by nine just because that's what i have right now i thought about stealing a speaker from the turtles cabinet and then replacing it later but eh, should we do that uh, <laughs> i don't want to obsess over this this is kind of a I don't know. I don't think it's that big of a deal if I put a six by nine. I mean, that's what was on here before. And I, I didn't even know it until we started taking it apart. 
But anyway, this is pretty much dry. Why don't we just go ahead and, and at least tack this, uh, the uh, speaker grill on here. And so it fits really nice like that. And then we saw before that the original one had staples in here. So they just stapled it to the wood. Um, at Walmart, I found these. Where are they? So I think these will probably work okay. These are little carpet tacks and they're black in color. I think they will go through the grill. And I was thinking we could just kind of hammer them to the sides here. So let's take a look. Yeah, I think those will work great right there. So let's kind of just do this real quick. And they kind of have a larger head. So I should probably do it on this cardboard. Let's see how this works. I don't think I need too many of these, but that totally works. Gotta be careful though, kinda wants to bend the metal. So let's just throw like a few in here. I don't think we need too many of these. Maybe two on each side or three on the long sides. Let's throw one down here. Yeah, that works really nice. Okay. Let's throw one right in the middle. on the edges. Yeah, those work perfect. Okay, so we got three on the long side, two on the short side, and it's on there really nice. So that looks pretty good. Okay, so now we gotta figure out the whole speaker situation. Um, uh, if I were to steal the, stick, the speaker from the turtles, let me, okay, let me just Google really quick. Let me, let me just see like what's available online I don't, I don't want to obsess too much about this, uh, but let me just take a look. Okay, I did some research here, and uh, turns out this 8-ohm speaker, I believe, is in there for a reason, okay? Um, I looked at the, at the amplifier chip that's on the amplifier. Now, what I'm discovering here is not original, okay? So I'm kind of playing detective here, and I'm, gl I'm glad I am because... Um, this amplifier chip here is an MB3730. I did some Googling and this amplifier is rated for an 8 ohm or higher speaker. And I found a thread, actually an old thread on Clove talking about this. And Matt Osborne, who I trust and know, said that you will fry this if you use anything less than an 8 ohm speaker. And I'm really glad I saw that thread. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna roll with the 8 ohm speaker. Now, the speaker that's in the Turtles <laughs> is a six and a half inch eight ohm speaker. Um, I think I'm gonna borrow that speaker. There's nothing really special about the speaker, but it's a round speaker, and I kinda would like a round speaker in a round hole and not a six by nine. So I think I'm gonna borrow the Turtles speaker and we're, we're gonna use that. And then I'll, I'll look for a new six and a half inch round eight ohm speaker for the Turtles. 
And really, <laughs> that turtle speaker might not even be original. I have to research what speaker is supposed to be in there. Okay, well, I'm glad I researched that. So I'm going to go ahead and get the turtle speaker, and we'll use that here because it's a nice round six and a half inch speaker, and we have a nice round hole. Okay, I've changed my mind. <laughs> I don't really feel like uh, undoing the turtle speaker, so I'm gonna leave that alone. We're gonna use the six by nine, the speaker that was in there, the eight ohm. I'll just throw a couple screws in there. I'll consider temporary, and I'll go look for a new speaker uh, that we can replace later, or maybe never. You know, I, I don't know. I, I, I feel like I'm, I'm imploding about this topic, and um, it might not be that big of a deal. <laughs> what do you guys think? What would you do? I'll just throw a couple screws in the 6x9 and we'll just kind of lightly tack it to the back. So I'm going to put some spade connectors on the speaker wires just so I don't have to solder it. Um, and that'll also make it easier if we do want to replace it again later. But I'll tell you this, the speakers sounded fine. I thought the audio was pretty good in this game. So let me go ahead and crimp these down here. Can't find my good crimpers. So let's crimp this and then we'll move on. Okay, good. Okay, so I gotta put on those little like side bracket thingies. Which is these things. Um, so these go on the side. They're kind of like the support and we can kind of see where they were because of the wear, like so. It's interesting, I, I put all the screws to one side and, and they're all mishmashed. I, I, I can't believe that I mixed those up. I don't think I did. I must have pulled four different, three different kinds of screws out of here. Weird. Unless, uh, and there's also screws that go to the side of the cabinet too. Which are these ones. Yeah, those are the screws for that. All right, let's go ahead and put these in. This is taking way longer than I anticipated. My pointless side trip to Walmart <laughs> didn't help. I did buy some of those uh, carpet tacks though at Walmart. Okay, so I want to figure out like what side the speaker goes on. I want to make sure we mount it the right way because this is going to go in here like this, right? Yeah. Yeah, so the speaker, I want the speaker mounts on this side right here. So I'm going to put it on the chair. And we're going to mount the speaker so the wires are on the right. And and yes, we're going to reuse this. So let's just try to center this as best as possible. Right about there.
And I'll just throw a couple screws in here and that's it. And then I'll start researching uh, new speakers. I have a feeling though this is going to be one of those things I just forget about. Can't see it. It sounds good. All right. I say right about there. I do want to get like some fresh holes here. All right, so why don't we go ahead and, and mount that whole assembly up there. And looks like I'm gonna need uh, two, four. So what's this here? There's like a ground wire. Well, where does that go? That's interesting. I'm just curious about this. There's like a ground strap that doesn't really, I guess you're supposed to screw it right there, but, but where does it ultimately tie into? Um, yeah, I have no idea. All right, let's get our four screws and mount this up here. And then we'll make our speaker connection after. See if I can start with my hand. Get the speaker wires are. Uh, hang on, I get the speaker wires are all bunched up here. of its support from these brackets, is that right? God, this is awkward. This is super awkward. one. Oh. All right, let me grab my drill. All right, good. Let's get one on the other side. Sure does look good. All right. Boy, that looks way better. Massive improvement.
Okay, we're in. So I need to make my speaker connections and, ah shoot, I need to take a photo. I don't, I don't know what side's positive and what side's negative. I mean, I could take a photo in there. Let's see. Okay. So let's take a look here. So here's the terminals. So the one closest to me is negative and that's positive. So we might as well get the polarity right. So let me run the speaker wires back through to the front. So I'm assuming that red and black is positive and black is negative. All right, let's, um, I'm gonna turn the game on. Let's test the speaker. Just make sure everything sounds cool before we really button this thing up. What do you guys think, huh? I think it looks great. Big difference. Um, the guy that makes those does a really good job for 40 bucks. Sounds good to me. So it's fine. Okay, so let's put it back together. We got to figure out how to put this all back together. So this right here is this bottom marquee channel. And these screws right here went right through the grill. Same thing on this side too. So we're gonna have to just go right through here through the metal on both sides. So this is the top. Let's just make sure we got the right pieces here. Yep. So this is the top channel right here. And this is the bottom one. So I gotta go right through here. And then the screws that were used for that before, I really did pull out all kinds of different screws here. But the common screw seems to be this one right here. Yeah, it was a small one. So we need one, two, three, we need four of these. Okay, I think I'm just gonna go for it. And then I think on the bottom here, for these screws, I'm gonna use those security screws. But I'm just gonna use these guys right here. And we gotta go through the metal, hopefully my rivets, I mean my, uh, yeah, I think we're fine. I'm wondering if I should drill a pilot hole or just try to go right in with the screw. Let's try going right in with the screw without a pilot hole. We gotta get through the metal. I don't know how this is gonna go. I kinda feel like I need to get my drill. Hang on. All right, I got my drill. So why don't we go ahead and do some pilot holes here. And I basically just wanna break through the metal. And just gotta make sure this is nice and snug here. All 
All right, so there's our first one. So I'm gonna screw that down. And then we'll just kind of go down the line here. Man. I think my hole needs to be a little bit bigger. Let me get a slightly larger drill bit here. Let's see if that will work. I think I need to go a little bigger yet. I just really want to just make a hole in the metal, right? So I don't, I don't want to go too deep in the wood. Ow, sharp. Yeah, careful. <laughs> ah, I just sliced my finger. Terrific. Jeez. Hmm. Boy, that hole needs to be pretty big there. So let's go to this size right here. Let's try that now. And I'm not wiping that hole off. There, that's good. All right, perfect. Okay, so, ah. Man, I did a number on my finger. Hang on, I gotta go take care of this. All right, all fixed. Don't be a John. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the rest of these. And I just want to break the metal. Okay. I guess we'll throw a screw in there real quick as we go down the line. Because originally, you know, this stuff was all plastic. I bet you they just screwed right through it. Okay. Clear. It's good. We got one more to go here. All right, so now we have on the bottom here, one, two, three, four, and those ones are visible. So I wanna use those security screws um, and I bought these on eBay. These are, um, I think technically midway security screws, but these will look a lot more finished here. 
and we'll just kind of go right in here with these. Now I'm gonna need to get the bit for those because that is like a security bit. So let me find that bit and then we'll, we'll do the same thing. We'll drill a hole and, and then throw these in there. Okay, I got the bit. Um, I'm gonna use a slightly smaller drill bit. I don't know what size it is, but I don't think these screws are as fat. So let's do the same thing. I just wanna break the metal. Okay, and I'll come in here. Oh yeah, that looks great. That looks 10 times better. Okay, looks nice and finished. I definitely recommend going on eBay and getting a bag of these um, screws. I think it's like $9 for a hundred of them and they're just amazing to have around for projects because they're used on a lot of games. Okay, so that's all done. That looks terrific. Um, so let me, let's clean up here and then we'll put it all back together. And I'll probably, so we have this glass channel. Yeah, let me, let's clean this up here because we got metal shavings and stuff all over the place. And by the way, let's kind of take a peek here at our work. Um, so that looks pretty good. Looks nice and legit. But we got metal filings everywhere. Let me, um, we gotta blow it off here. Let me, maybe I'll turn my leaf blower on, hang on. All right. I need to, my carb is really bad on that thing. I had to play up the choke the whole time. All right, so um, before I button this up, I wanna Windex it. Just make sure we're nice and clean before we close it up. Actually, no, let's not button it up because what I wanna do right now is let's, let's address the control panel. So I don't wanna put it back together just yet. We could put the marquee on. Yeah, why don't we do that real quick? Um, so let's clean the uh, the plexi for the marquee, and then we'll throw that on. And then I'm gonna we're gonna do the control panel real quick too. So let's just take some paper towel here and clean the inside of this. And I don't know, we, we might revisit this and, and replace the speaker with a round one. I don't know, what do you guys think? All right, so, so we got some scratches on one side. Maybe I'll put the scratch side towards the inside. Be nice to get a piece of glass for this. This is definitely scuffed up. All right, I feel pretty good about that. Just kind of leave that there. Let's get our artwork. So this is gonna go in here like 
so. Yeah, this piece of plexi is far from perfect. I kind of want to get it in the slot. So let's do that first. And put that on top. And here's our channel for the top. And I'll probably use those security screws for that too. Might as well. All right, let me get the screws. Because when I removed all these screws, I mean, it was a hodgepodge of stuff. So let's just kind of replace them all and put these nice factory looking screws in here. All right, let's screw it down here. Yeah, these screws are just totally legit. Okay, so that's all set. <clears throat> all right, how are we looking? This looks so much better, my God. It just looks right. So we can take a look up here. I gotta clean the top, I think, with some simple green, but real dusty up here. We'll do that before we bring it in the basement. Um, all right, so let's talk about the control panel. So I wanna remove the Plexi, I just don't like it. And, um, I'm hoping there's a Molex on here. Just drop the screw. I'm hoping there's a Molex on the control panel so we can disconnect it and really take everything apart. Uh, I, I, I suspect we're not gonna get lucky here. I don't know. Yeah, we're not. So there's one Molex here. We may, maybe we might. Let's see, this goes to this connector and then this bundle goes to another connector. So it looks like we can actually um, disconnect it by removing two Molexes, but there is a wire tie down there that's kind of preventing everything from moving. So let me come in See if I can undo that real quick. Okay. All right, let's take a look what's going on in here. So this whole bundle goes to this Molex. So that's free. And then this bundle right here goes to this connector right here. So let's see if we're free now. That's free. That's free. And then there is a ground over here. You guys can see that. There's this green ground wire that is attached to this strap. And it's just kind of hooked on here. <clears throat> Boy, that's really on there. I have to bend it. 
it's one of those little clips that usually <clears throat> hooks onto a monitor frame. And they took that clip and clipped it to the strap. Boy, that really is on there. There we go. Okay, so it was this little guy right here. Okay, so this is now completely free. So let me clean off my uh, table here and let's put it on there and, and get to work. All right, so in order to get this plexi off, we're gonna have to remove all of these uh, carriage bolts, uh, the cone buttons, and the igniter button here. So let's, um, See if I have some pliers here we can use. I actually have that button tool somewhere. Let's just use this. Okay, so we have a nice little leaf switch here. That's in pretty good shape. So let's go ahead and get the joysticks off. spinning. Boy, that does not want to come off. Jesus. There we go. All right, <clears throat> I got the first one off. So I'm gonna go ahead and just get all eight of these off. And then we're gonna clean these up a little bit. We could probably put these in the tumbler. Um, I don't, don't really have time for that. So all right, I'm gonna go ahead and get the rest of them off. Look at this one. Look at that right there. There's some improvising. <laughs> all right, I'm going to keep going. Okay, I got all the carriage bolts off. So there was two, like, oddballs on here, right here, okay? And the rest of them were kind of like this, like, kind of gun blue, kind of black. So I went in my parts bin, and I found these right here. And so I think I'll use these instead of the ones that were on there, the oddball ones. And then I think we should rattle can all of these though and paint them black. So let's, I'm just gonna clean the heads up real quick. And you can also put this on your drill. I know a lot of people always talk about this, right? You go like this. And you can just go. works pretty well. These ones that came from my junk bin have a maker's mark on them. I wonder if I could sand that off completely. Yeah, almost. God, they really look good. I wonder if we should keep them silver. So here's one. So let's do one of the original ones. Hmm, I'm tempted to keep them silver. They clean up pretty nice. All right, I'm gonna go through the rest of them. 
and then we'll come back. Okay, they're all clean. Boy, they look good, huh? What do you think, silver or black? Silver or black? I kind of think black. They were originally black. Ah, oh, shoot. <laughs> so let's let's just hit them. With, let's rattle can them a couple times. And uh, I'm gonna stick them in this box over here. So let's just go ahead and push these in here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, and we'll just hit them with some black. And I usually do a few coats on these. So we'll let that dry. So let's keep going and we'll come back. All right, so we gotta make sure we put these back on the right way. I wonder if I have a Sharpie here. Just wanna put a mark. That way when we put the joysticks back on, we know which way to put them on. And then we're gonna have to pull the uh, the, e uh, the C pins, clips. So I need my needle nose pliers. And let's just see if we can pull these right out. There's one. And there's two. I see a little operator mod here. Let's pull these out. And there's a spring in there that's going to come out too. So here's our joysticks here. We'll clean these up too. And let's get the cone buttons off. So this is the bottom one. I'm gonna take my pencil and just put a little mark on it. Just so when we put it back together, we know what we're doing. Okay, so there's the Atari cone buttons. So this all comes off, let's put it to the side. And then here's some dust washers. And then here's our plexi that we're gonna just toss. I, I just don't want this. Um, it's not like the game's on location and someone made this, this is homemade. It's not original, right in the garbage. Okay, so let's clean up the control panel a little bit. Um, let's make some room. So this is in really great shape, by the way. I mean, for all original, that's terrific. Um, I'm gonna get a little bit of Mean Green and uh, Magic Eraser. So let's go ahead and just spray this thing down. And we'll just see if we can kind of minimize some of the cigarette burn.
It doesn't really bother me that much, to be honest. You know, this was a game that was on location in the 80s. How cool is that? It's a survivor. This is not repro. And you, these, um, these control panel overlays are always faded. This is in really good shape. Boy, that really pops. Boy, that looks 10 times better than it did. That is popping. Boy, doesn't that look better? Let's go back over it. So let's just really see if we can work this cigarette burn. I'm not sure how superficial it is if it's all the way underneath. I don't think so. I know this was a viewer mail not that long ago. Yeah, I don't think we're doing anything. I don't think it's just on the surface, you know? I think it looks really good, to be honest. For all original, heck yeah. Okay, so let's let that dry. And why don't we move on to the joysticks here. So, normally what I do with these is I go like this. This is 80 grit. So we'll go to a higher grit after this. Let's just get the surface rust off. Better, right? Band aids falling off. I mean, compare it to kind of how it looked before, right? Looks pretty good. Let me see what other grid I have over here. Maybe we'll go a little bit higher and really try to polish it up. So I have, uh, what is this? This is 180. Let me grab another sheet of 80 here. So we'll finish it off with the 180. So let's take a fresh piece of 80 here. I think that looks pretty good. And we'll go over it with the eight with the 180 in a second here. A lot of elbow grease. 
Let me see if I have a lower grit. Hang on. Yeah, 80 is the lowest, uh, coarsest grit that I have, so I'm just going to keep going here. It's coming off. It's a lot of work. Looks ten times better. All right, let's see how we look. These look pretty good. Ten times better than they were. So let's try the 180 here. This should really kind of polish it up. Oh. Yeah, so let's compare the two. So the left one had the 180 on it. Definitely looks shinier. All right, I think we're done. That's a workout. Looks pretty good, right? Okay, so let's um, clean up a little bit here. I got dust all over this. Yeah, don't sand over the control panel after you clean it. So there's a little bit of rust on the underside. I'm gonna let it go. I, I just don't want to risk spray painting this and getting overspray on the other side. Um, I don't know. It, it just feels risky to me. I'm just going to let it go. I don't even want to sand it. God, that looks good. Doesn't it really pops right? I mean a lot of the original ones They're all like yellowed and faded and stuff that that thing really pops right there Okay, so we got to wait for the screws to dry the nuts um, I'm gonna hit them with another coat right now All right, so let's let that dry and we'll come back. All right, guys, um, it's actually been a few hours here and these are all dry. So I think we're ready to put this whole thing back together. Um, so I guess we'll turn it upside down and just get to work. Um, now I did put like some pencil marks on here for orientation. So that goes like that and that goes like that. Uh, or does it? No, it doesn't. That does, that's not right. It's like this. And here's my pencil mark on the control panel. Okay, so that's the way it goes. And then our cone lights. Um, so I had marked which was the bottom one. This one. Okay, so those go like so. So why don't we go ahead and screw the cone lights down real quick. You know, I know we didn't do a ton to this control panel, but I think what we did is going to make a difference. 
The one thing that's interesting to me here is that the cone buttons don't light up, and I don't think they're supposed to on this game. But on a, if this was an Atari game, they would most certainly light up. Why is this one not tightening down all the way? Hmm. This one doesn't want to go down all the way. What's the deal? Hmm. Getting tight enough. Why is that? Let me try flipping these around. Okay, that's good. Like that one, this one is just loose. Like it needs a washer or something. Let me see if I can put a washer on top of it. For some reason, this thing is not going down all the way. It's like it's bombing out. If I were to throw a washer on there, I'm trying to think. I think the Atari cone buttons did have a washer on one end, didn't it? It's like I just need a little... Oh, my God. There are moths everywhere. Let's see if I can find a washer that would work. We had a really bad, like, caterpillar thing going on here. And all of those caterpillars are now moths. <laughs> Gypsy moths. It's disgusting. Let's see if I can find a washer we can use for this. Hmm. I mean, there definitely was not a washer on there. I can't seem to find a washer big enough. All right, let me poke around. Hang on. I can't find one. And you know what? If I find one, though, I need to find two because uh, it's going to affect the overall height of this. So I'm just going to put it on there like so. And it's fine. It's just that you can turn it. And I'm wondering if it was like that already before. Okay, so let's go ahead and put our carriage bolts in here. And we're going to need our nuts. So this should all go together pretty quick here. Oh, wait, 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 wait. We need our dust washer before we do this. Okay, so the dust washer, there's a textured side and a non-textured side. The textured side should be up. That's the side that you're going to actually see. And it goes in between the joystick and the control panel. See it right here? And then when we put the joystick in here, we're going to go right through the hole of it. Fool out. Ah. 
Oh, come on. It's like I'm trying to hold this all together because I don't want the dust washer to fall out. So let's just get two of these going here. Son of a... One of these are not going to have a lock washer because that's just what was on here. Actually, this is a lock washer. All right, so let's tighten this up. This one. Okay, so that's in. I'm gonna go ahead and do the second joystick the same exact way. I'll uh, spare you guys. But I'll do the four bolts and come back. Okay, I have um, both of the joystick uh, bases on. So now we need to do our leaf uh, button here which is real simple. And by the way, on the button, there's these two little ears. Uh, actually, this button doesn't have the ears. Sometimes they have them, sometimes they're cut off. But it goes in a little, little notch on here, but it doesn't have it. And then this goes on here, and then our little pal nut goes over it like so. And you can usually just tighten these hand tight, or Tighten it, hand tightened, and then just come in with some pliers and just snug it up. All right, so let's take a look from the top here. So our dust washers are in a good spot. Our igniter button is there. Something seems weird with these cone buttons. Guess not. Just feels like these are sitting up too high. Try to figure out what's different about these. Yeah, there's nothing I can do differently here. I think there's supposed to be a washer that I'm missing under each one. Okay. All right, so now it's time to put the joysticks back in, okay? So we have these little actuators here. I actually cleaned these a little bit with Simple Green. And, and then we're gonna need our C-clips. And in here, and you gotta kinda just thread the needle, right? So we're gonna, we're gonna go through the dust washer, okay? And then in the back, we have to get through the other washer and the spring, okay? And we're in. Just like so. And then this guy right here goes in here like that. Okay. And then we're going to have to just put some pressure down on it and then pop this C clip in here. I've heard people call these the Jesus clip because they fly across the room. And that's what you say. All right. I 
any bigger pliers. Stay, stay, stay. Okay, so that one's in right there. So let's go ahead and do the other one. Just kind of thread the needle. So the spring popped out, put the spring back, and then the actuator goes on top with the little flanged end down. Okay, same deal, C-clip, and then Just gonna put some pressure down on it. Usually just kind of get it started like that. And then take your pliers. Just be careful because these things really do want to fly across the room. All right, that's it. And by the way, I wanted to show you guys something that was kind of interesting. You know, there's always a problem with these leaf switches on the Wicko joysticks where the little tabs back here break off. And I've come up with my own solutions to fix that, like by jamming it back in and soldering and melting back here. Someone actually took the tab and soldered it to the blade. I've never seen that before, but it totally works. See that? Right here? See how they soldered the tab right to the blade? I guess that's one way to do it. Because this tab used to be in the back here and it broke off and then they soldered it directly to the blade. And what I would do sometimes is take this and then try to jam it in there with heat. Um, anyway, all right, we're done. Control panel is ready to go back on the game. So let's go ahead and bring it over here. And we're gonna have to make all of our connections but I can tell you right now, this looks better than it was did before. I think what we did made a difference. So, this doesn't want to go down. What is it hitting? So it appears that the big screw placement actually matters here. I put the big screws up here. They need to go in the back because they're hitting the wood. All right, let me just redo that real quick. Because the guy, whoever did this, didn't have all the screws. So they kind of improvised. So I'm going to have to undo it and move these big ones to the other side. I'll do that real quick. Hang on. All right, I got it back on. Um... It's a tight fit. So what I want to do right now though is I gotta I gotta make up my connections again and then this so we gotta just put this in such a place that we can actually work on this. So there's a ground wire right here that goes on that. Uh, okay. I'm trying to think of the best way to do this. All right, so let's do this. So you guys can't see, but I'm basically just making all my connections down here. I think I'm gonna have to do this with a coin door. Eh, maybe not. There's one, and here's the other. No? And then they had everything kind of neatened up a little bit with a wire tie. Just like that. 
And then I'm going to try to make that ground connection. I swear to God those comb buttons were not sticking up that far before. I don't, I don't get it. Alright, let's, right, let's see if we can make the ground wire connection. God, this is a pain in the butt. Okay. The ground has been reconnected. So the only thing left to do is do this little wire tie right here. Which was these two bundles. God, it doesn't even seem like it's necessary, but I guess I'll do it. Let's get a Phillips bit. I, you guys can't really see this, but I'm gonna go in there and just screw this to get through this to the wall and run the two harnesses through it. Hang on. All right, I got it on. Okay, so we're about done here. We could put the piece of glass on and the glass channel and all that good stuff. Um, so let me get the glass and the glass channel. I'm gonna clean it. We should probably clean one side of it. Because I don't think we're going to really need to take this off again, right? So, if we come over here, and we'll put this side against this, the TV. The TV. Oh, my God. I'm doing it all the time now. I'm saying TV. <laughs> it's a monitor. All right. So, this is the side that's going to go towards the monitor. Okay, and then we should kind of wipe down the monitor too, just to make sure we're not putting a piece of clean glass over a dirty monitor. And I know that I cleaned this before. Okay, so let's take this, and we gotta drop it in here. So I'm gonna have to just kind of undo the control panel just a little bit here. So, and then this just kind of drops in. Oh, that's right, and the glass channel goes on the top. And then this gets, oh boy, we're gonna have to drill more holes. This goes right here. Oh, yeah. So that's how it goes. And I'll see if I can drill this down. Okay, so now we're gonna have to drill more holes because this then gets screwed up here. So what drill bit did we use? Okay, I got the drill bit here. So we're gonna have to just uh Put pressure on this and break through the metal. Is that drill bit too big for no reason? Go down a size. Try to make the hole as small as possible. That looks pretty good. More metal shavings. Uh, I need the security bit. Hang on. All right. Okay. There's one. That guy look, looks so much better. Okay. 
Okay, there's two. This just looks so much more finished than it was. All right, let's get a screw. Okay, and we just got to do one more here. That looks pretty good, I have to say. Looks completely legit. Compared to the hodgepodge of screws and it was just like a, a symphony of weirdness. <laughs> so let's just clean this up. Got metal shavings everywhere. All right, let me plug the game in, make sure the controls still work. Because um, we definitely were kind of handling the, the leaf switches and all that. Just make sure everything still works. I'm really bothered by the cone buttons. It just doesn't look right to me. I don't know what changed here, but am I, am I overlooking something that we need to address in the next video? I don't know. Let's kind of just take a look at our work, though. I think we did a really good job here today. All right, the game's on. So let's make sure everything works. Okay, that works. Joysticks look so much nicer. And I really like ha having my hand on this instead of the plexi. Just feels more right. Wait, the igniter button's stuck out. Okay, so the, the leaf switch was a little bent. Okay, so we're in good shape, guys. So we're gonna stop here. I have to. It's like 11 o'clock. It is 11 o'clock on Sunday night. I cannot go any further. <laughs> and you know what? I think we did a lot today, believe it or not. Um, so, control panel, look at those joysticks. Huh? I think those look pretty sharp. We took off the plexi. I think that was the right move. I'm not a big fan of this button here. I might look around and see if I have a better red button. I don't like the, the height and the concaveness of it. I'm gonna go in the basement. We might replace that in the next video. So our black painted bolts look really good. I think the shafts of the joystick look a lot better. These cone buttons to me, I don't know, something's not right here. I, I know there's supposed to be a washer on here, and I don't know if I was, maybe we're missing that and it was always like this, uh, but they work, right? Yeah, two player works, one player, they both work. Um, we got some metal shavings here. We're probably gonna have to take this apart again and clean it up before we bring it in the basement. Um, up here, the new speaker grill is a massive success. Would you agree? You know, we've got the original channel here with our new security screws. I mean, I think that looks just sharp as all heck. So the next video, we're gonna attack the kick plate and then we'll be pretty much done. 
and then we'll probably just clean it up all around. But I'm, I'm liking what I'm seeing. I, I think the control panel to me looks automatically better uh, with the joysticks the way they are now and that, that plexi gone and, and we simple greened it and magic eraser. And of course, I love seeing the correct speaker grill up there now. So, all right guys, that's it. We're gonna stop here. Let's go down to the basement. We'll hang out some more. We'll, you guys wanna read some viewer mail? <laughs> so, all right guys, that was part number one of the cloak and dagger restore. Let's go down to the basement. All right, guys, there you have it. I guess that was part number one of the Cloak and Dagger Restore. What'd you think, huh? It's coming along. <laughs> it is indeed coming along. I cannot wait till we finish that and get that down here. I think we'll bring the computer space ball down at the same time and then maybe pull the Bronco out and bring that to the garage. I, I do want to work on the Bronco. I'm going to try to squeeze that in this year. I know we've had this thing for like a year or two and it's just sitting there and it's making me sad. And it's and to me, it's a really fun project. Like working on the EM pinball machine is like, is like the final frontier in a way, you know? So anyway, let's do some viewer mail. You guys want to hang out. Uh, and by the way, if you want to participate in the viewer mail, you got to email them to me at, at john at johnsarcade.com. That's john at johnsarcade.com. It can be a question, it can be a comment, it can be whatever. Just send those emails to john at johnsarcade.com. Uh, the first one here is actually from my Facebook page. Yes, I have a Facebook page, John's Arcade. I also have an Instagram page too, John's Arcade, uh, and, and Twitter, but BLKDOG7. Anyway, this one's from Tim on my Facebook page. Um, I've been getting a lot of messages on the Facebook page, and I'm going to try to read those on here too. So I guess this is another way to participate is to, to send them through Facebook. Um, but sometimes I don't find these as easily. I, I definitely find the viewer mail is much easier in my email box. Uh, anyway, this one says, uh, Hey John, I finally got my first arcade bowling machine that was converted from a turtle's cabinet. I'm missing a few important parts in my eyes, like the two coin buckets and two coin mechs. I'm not looking to spend a lot of money as these... Uh, as I will convert the mechs to a nickel sized token just for the look and feel, but I really need to find the bucks to catch the tokens. Any good leads that you may have would be great. I know you deal in this stuff all the time. Keep up the awesome videos. I love the old ones and I watch the new ones when they come out. Thanks uh, for your time, Tim. So Tim, um, I'll tell you this. Uh, this has been a problem for Jay and I at the hangar because we've brought games there that didn't have any coin buckets. And uh, we've had to improvise with like boxes and some of the, f uh, like, you know, the hangar's a, a, a restaurant and they have these plastic containers that they use uh, for like, I don't know, chopped onions and stuff. So we've been kind of stealing those and a couple of our games have those in them. But ultimately you're gonna want the real deal, right? So. Well, number one, obviously eBay is a great place to look. And then also, um, go to ArcadeBoneyard.com. Now, I know a lot of people don't like this guy because he, he, what he does is he, he strips cabinets and sells all the parts. In a way, it's a necessary evil. I'm not going to pass judgment on the guy. I'll, I'll leave it up to you guys, okay? But I know that he's not popular because of this. But I have bought stuff from him, and I don't know if I feel guilty or not about it because he is safe. And, and the thing is, like, I bought, I, I know I've talked about this before, but I, I bought my track and field control panel from him, but it was already converted to something else when I got it. It had, like, some other, like, JAMA game overlay on it. So it was already trash, and it saved my game. So he does have some stuff that comes from junk you know, converted games, he takes the parts and sells them, but that's going to be a good place to find those coin buckets. Go, go to ArcadeBoneyard.com. Um, this one's from Devin. Hi, John. How are you today? I hope you're done fixing the screen for the journey. I am, Devin. Um, almost. I got to adjust the colors. I'm not too happy with the way it looks right now, but we, we can get there. I didn't have a mirror in the last video. I was using the the Quake 3 CD. <laughs> Are you still restoring the Mortal Kombat 2 in the next video? Also, haven't you haven't you heard about the upcoming Super Nintendo Mini coming out in September? Hope you get one soon. Well, goodbye for now. Sincerely, Devin. So, so Devin, yeah, we're going to be getting back to the Mortal Kombat 2. I'm not going to do that until I finish the Cloak and Dagger because I the Cloak and Dagger, we can knock that out in a couple weeks. Mortal Kombat 2 is going to be a lot more involved. I'm going to tell you right now, though, that polo monitor, like the thought of working on that right now makes me want to cry, especially because of what we went through with the Geo 7. Um, you know, it's funny, you know, some of the last monitors I've been working on, like the 6100, the Geo 7, the Polo, it's like the textbook shotgun stuff isn't working. <laughs> I've gotten lucky with a lot of games with the shotgunning, and for some reason, it's not working. Anyway, 
we're gonna get to it and I hope to have it done and I will be getting an SNES Mini for sure. We'll talk about it on the channel here. Uh, next one's from Robert. Hey John, I have a quick question for you on the Bad Geo 7. Since you're going to use the chassis for parts, did you ever test the chassis by removing the jumper wire you put on to see if its removal would fix your problem? Um, that is one thing you changed uh, when you're fixing it. It might have bridged or jumped something even being aware of it. Yeah, that's a good point, but I double, ch I, on the back of the Geo 7 where the flyback was, I put a jumper wire, okay, because one of the traces uh, was kind of bad, but I tested continuity on that multiple times, and that, that was a solid connection there. I don't think it was going anywhere else it was supposed to. Anyway, he goes on and says, I myself had just a cap kitted a Vectrex. When I turned it on, the vectors were all screwed up. And I had sure I did a proper job of capping it problem occurred because my desoldering gun had gotten a lot of solder in it. And when I stopped the vacuum and moved the gun, a blob fell out. Yeah, see, anything can happen here. And it connected two traces. Also, my handling of the board broke two legs of non-electrolytic caps. Took a day to find all the problems. Yeah, Robert, you know, you know what? Whatever's wrong with that Geo 7, it could be something very stupid and simple. And in fact, I know it is. And the thing is, uh, Adam mentioned to me that he might want to take a look at the board. I've had a few people ask me for that board. So I'm going to tell you this. There will be a conclusion to the Geo 7. I have a feeling that somebody, not me, is going to figure out what's wrong with it. And there will be a video <laughs> and a reveal. And, and we'll talk about it here, too. Uh, next one's from Ed. Uh, Hello, my name is Ed Hartsley. I just want to let you know that I love your show. And thanks to you, I've now started to play my old Nintendo games again. I'd all but forgot about how good the good old days uh, being at arcades. Soon I will start collecting arcades. I found a few, but I will let you know about that later. Keep up the good work. Bye. So, Ed... Thanks for the kind words. I, I'm glad you're you're back into your retro stuff. <laughs> so, <laughs> and be careful. The arcades can get the arcade games can get pretty addicting. So, all right, guys, that's it. We're done. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, if you've never subscribed to the show, uh, be sure to click that subscribe button and leave comments, likes, all that stuff. Tell your friends. Uh, I try to release videos at least once a week. Sometimes in between. It's getting harder these days. Um, but anyway, yeah. Thanks for, thanks for watching and subscribing. Uh, be sure to check out my podcast, Video Game Outsiders, at videogameoutsiders.com. My friend Michelle and I do that podcast every Tuesday at 9 p.m. We're on the Riotcast Network, which is a comedy network. Our website is videogameoutsiders.com, and we're doing the show live on YouTube now, uh, youtube.com slash VGOcast. But really, the best way to listen to the Video Game Outsiders podcast is to download our app. Go to iTunes or Google Play, search for Video Game Outsiders, download the app, it's completely free. You could listen to all the new podcasts on it. Um, we do also some extra content that you have to get with a subscription, but the, the main show is free every week, and you can listen through the app uh, at iOS or Google Play. Again, search for Video Game Outsiders. All right, guys, that's it. We're done. I'll see you very soon. Later, and bye. <laughs>